that Chinese spacecraft, ferrying rocks drilled from the moon's surface, landed back on Earth Thursday, delivering the first fresh lunar samples to scientists since the 1970s. The Chang'e 5 mission's return spacecraft was in the home stretch of a 23-day mission that successfully launched on China's most powerful rocket on November 23 and landed on the moon on December 1. It collected samples with its robotic arm and drill, then took off again on December 3 to accomplish the first automated docking between two robotic spacecraft around another planetary body. It performed a final departure maneuver on December 12 to head for Earth. The 22-minute maneuver with four small thrusters provided the impulse necessary for the Chang'e 5 return craft to break free of the moon's gravity. The probe completed a course correction burn Monday, aiming for a landing in Inner Mongolia. The return spacecraft released a capsule carrying the moon rocks into the Earth's atmosphere. The re-entry capsule with an entry velocity of 40,000 km per hour then bounced off the atmosphere in a skip re-entry to slow the craft down before a parachute-assisted landing. Check out our previous videos to know about the mission in detail, link in the description. The return capsule then headed for a Beijing laboratory for opening, with a research team eagerly awaiting their chance to start studying the fresh moon specimens. On 19 December, scientists extracted the lunar sample container from the return capsule, and the China National Space Administration scientists handed over the lunar samples to the Chinese Academy of Sciences for research. Chinese officials have not released an estimate of how much material the spacecraft gathered on the moon. Given the success of the lunar exploration mission, China space officials say the next step is to cooperate with scientists of other nations to analyze the moon samples. Researchers hope to learn about the moon's history and evolution from these samples. Indonesian government invited SpaceX to assess the possibility of setting up a rocket launch site in their country. According to a ministry statement, President Joko Widodo discussed the idea with SpaceX founder Elon Musk during a phone call last week. Indonesia, being a country which has several areas located near to the equator, will help to lower the cost of SpaceX's rocket launches. Currently, SpaceX launches most of its rockets from Cape Canaveral, Florida, which is located 28 degrees north of the equator. Getting to geostationary orbit from Florida takes a little extra work because rockets have to deposit a satellite on a path that's slightly askew from the equator, and the satellites then need to change their direction in orbit by burning an onboard engine. That requires fuel, which takes up space on a satellite and influences the vehicle's design. At a spot near the equator, such a plane change would be minuscule, requiring less fuel. Additionally, the Earth is moving faster at the equator than other points on the planet. So, a rocket launching on the equator gets an extra speed boost, making it easier for the vehicle to reach the extra high velocities needed to achieve orbit. The rocket doesn't need as much fuel, making launches more efficient and potentially allowing SpaceX to pack in more cargo on a flight. Indonesian Space Agency announced last year a plan to build its first spaceport on the island of Bayak, which is just one degree south of the equator. Elon Musk responded to the invitation by planning to send his team to Indonesia in January 2021 to explore all the opportunities for this collaboration. Musk and Widodo also discussed investment opportunities for Tesla in Indonesia. The pioneering electric car company is reportedly eyeing Indonesia's large nickel reserves, a key component for its batteries. Astra, a California-based startup aimed at launching small satellites, successfully launched its rocket to space for the first time on Tuesday. Astra's rocket, dubbed 3.2, took off from Alaska's Pacific Spaceport Complex on December 15. The vehicle successfully climbed to space, performing all of its expected engine burns and separations. The rocket reached its target altitude of 390 km and a final speed of 7.2 km per second. Unfortunately, that was just short of 7.68 km per second, the speed the company needed to reach to make orbit. Still, the company says the test flight was a major success and is preparing to fly its next rocket with a payload on board. Astra CEO Chris Kemp blamed the problem on some residual liquid oxygen propellant leftover in the rocket's tanks, which prevented the vehicle from getting where it needed to go. The company says it's an easy fix for the next flight, and the engineers need to adjust the ratio of the propellants in the tanks. Astra's first orbital launch attempt, with a booster known as Rocket 3.1, occurred this past September. 
Rocket 3.1 got off the ground well, but experienced a guidance issue during its first stage engine burn, prompting Astra to terminate the flight about 30 seconds after liftoff, for safety reasons. Astra is developing rockets designed to give small spacecraft dedicated rides to orbit. Astra hopes to be fully up and running by next year. Another California-based company, Rocket Lab, already provides small spacecraft launch service, but Astra plans to carve out its own niche with its line of flexible and low-price boosters. Rocket Lab CEO Peter Beck congratulated Team Astra on Twitter for their milestone achievement. Japanese space agency officials said that they found a large number of pitch black rock and dust particles after opening a capsule returned to Earth earlier this month by the Hayabusa 2 mission. Scientists working inside a super clean laboratory in Japan opened the first of three sample collection chambers inside Hayabusa 2's return capsule, beginning the process of analyzing the samples. The JAXA team spotted some black particles sitting on the bottom of the capsule sample catcher when they pulled out the container on Monday. By Tuesday, scientists found more of the soil and gas samples in a compartment that stored those from the first touchdown of the spacecraft on the asteroid last year. The pan-shaped capsule was dropped by Hayabusa 2 from space to a predetermined spot in Australia on December 6, marking the end of its six-year round trip to asteroid Ryugu. Scientists hope that the capsule will provide insight into the origins of the solar system and life on Earth. Check out our previous video to know more about the mission.